It's good to see all of you this morning and to be here and worship God together. Uh, about three or four weeks ago, on a Sunday night, uh, we was at uh, Cherryville, and Brother Miller has been preaching on prayer on Sunday nights. And then after he gets finished preaching, we have a time of prayer. And sometimes he has us do it different ways. Like one night he had the women get on one side and the men on the other, and we just prayed. Like I prayed for the ladies that was there. We prayed for each other, and the men prayed for each other. This night he had said for us to pray wherever we had maybe felt God in a special way sometime in the past in the church there. I didn't have any special place and I was already standing. And so I just stayed where I was at, standing, and I began to pray. And I have something that is pretty dear to my heart that I feel like I needed an answer to, of God. It's beyond my control and I don't know what to do or what to say. But that night, as we begin to pray, God began to help me. And he really helped me. And as I prayed for that situation, he let me know that he heard my prayer and that he could take care of it. He had the, he had the controls and he could take care of it. Well, like I said, that's been three or four weeks ago. And you know, we all want answers right away. In fact, I thought the situation was bad enough already that it needed to be taken care of right away. Well, it hasn't been taken care of. And yesterday, I found out maybe things were getting worse. And but I just looked to God and I said, God, I know you heard my prayer that night. Yeah. And I know that you still have it in control. Yeah. And I know, as I said earlier in Sunday school, I can trust Jesus. We sang the song, He's Never Failed Yet, and as I, I don't like the yet either. But because He never has failed. Sometimes the answers don't come exactly like we want them to come. With my grandson, when he got hurt in a bad accident and, and should have died, I got help from God, and God just helped me in a special way. And I thought God was just going to raise him up, and he was going to be good as new. Weeks, months have gone by. And it hadn't been just like I thought it should be, but God has worked miracles in that boy's life. It's been, let's see, he's 19 and it was 11 when it happened. So it's been eight years ago. And I wouldn't say he's as good as new, but he graduated from high school last May. He has a job. And he's able to do a lot of things, a few things he can't do, but he's able to do a lot of things. And so as far as I'm concerned, God is just still working. He's just still answering prayer. It seems like a long time, but God hasn't forgotten. Well, the situation that was I was praying for four weeks ago, he hadn't forgot it either, even though it seems like nothing's happening. If anything, things are getting worse. But I believe I can trust God. Yeah. I don't know. He didn't tell me how he was going to answer the prayer. He just said he had it in control. And so I'm trusting him. And you can trust him. You may have things in your life that bothering you or has been a problem to you. And if God has helped you to pray and you believe he has an answer, 
Don't get discouraged if he doesn't answer right away. Just hold on. God knows what weighs best. And you can trust him to give you the answer that you need. God picked up a sparrow that could no longer fly. He brushed off the wounds and then watched it soar into the sky. If he's mindful of creation, on this I can depend. I am his child and I can place all my trust in him. I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. He never once has failed to meet my need. He is my strong tower. The strength in my weakest hour. I can trust Jesus. He takes care of me. I have prayed some prayers and felt they never were heard. But I held to God's hands and kept right on trusting in his word. My wants and God's desires don't always agree, but I lean on his will, for he always knows what's best for me. I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. He never once has failed to meet my need. He is my strong tower, the strength in my weakest hour. I can trust Jesus. He takes care of me. If you know the course, sing it with me. I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. He never once has failed to meet my need. He is my strong tower. The strength in my weakest hour. I can trust Jesus. He takes care of me. Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I do want to remember, uh, I did forget something last week, and I don't want to forget it today, but uh, Brother Greg Miller told me, he said, I want you to tell the folks at Rogers that I said hi. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, I uh, bear that little greeting to you this morning from uh, Brother Miller. Well, I hope you're happy in the Lord. I hope you're glad you're here. And uh, we're going to be reading uh, today from the 19th chapter of Revelation and then back to the 45th Psalm. <clears throat> so if you want to be finding your place, we're going to ask you to stand just a moment while we read the 19th chapter of Revelation and the uh, 45th Psalm. <clears throat> Shall we stand together?
Beginning with the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation and the 6th verse, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Going back to the psalm, the 45th chapter of Psalms, and we read the first eight verses last, last Sunday morning. So if you'll drop down with us to the ninth verse, I would like to say here that the, uh, the, the Psalms, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, much of the Proverbs, uh, the Song of Solomon is written, uh, much of it is written poetically and prophetically. And so Nancy told me she read over this psalm and she wondered where I was getting all I was getting till she read uh, anyway after she'd read it. But anyway, a lot of it is that way. You have to you have to you have to study it really to uh, a lot of those passages. I, we've been reading Proverbs for our daily reading and. Uh, we're through Proverbs now. We're over to the Song of Solomon. But there's a lot of things there that uh, are uh, a little bit hard to be understood. But anyway, this morning, hopefully, we can uh, uh, tell you in such a way that it's a blessing to you. Uh, the ninth verse. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the Lord, great, uh, so shall the king, greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within; her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be, they be brought, and they shall enter into the king's palace. Now we're talking this morning about this lovely bride, but the last two verses shift back, and because of the masculine gender that's given in the Hebrew, the 16th and the 17th verses here go back to the king. Instead of thy father shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. If you bow your head with us. Fathers, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the message that we feel like, Lord, that you've given us. We pray that you'd help us to give it, your Lord, in such a way that it would be inspirational, and not only inspirational, your Lord, but some way you'd put your seal upon it to some of the hearts that are here this morning. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for everyone that is here, and we'll praise thy name. Amen. You may be seated. Last week we uh, began this uh, message and this psalm here, and we talked, first of all, there was a picture of the king, <clears throat> and uh, uh, after the picture of the king, we saw there was another picture, and there was a picture of this victorious warrior that went to war, as so to speak, uh, to gain his bride. And then we, uh, the, the last picture that we saw was the ideal uh, bridegroom. Uh, and today the picture is going to be of the lovely bride. <clears throat> I have uh, something this morning that I want to give, though, that isn't uh, uh, poetic. <laughs> and uh, this here this morning, as I begin, I guess, is an introduction to this message. But I want to... Uh, I want to give it to you, and if you are married or 
uh, have any desire to be married sometime. Uh, why, to those of us that are in that state or hope to be someday, why I give uh, the, the following. Uh, this here will transfer not only to the marriage relationship, but it transfers uh, to your relationship with your eternal bridegroom. <clears throat> First of all, when we uh, decide that we found the, found the person of our dreams, uh, uh, first of all, there has to be a commitment. And uh, with that commitment, uh, maybe we could say a synonym to that would be steadfastness. <clears throat> but uh, before we say our I do's, hopefully in every situation there is a uh, there is uh, a, a determination uh, that uh, nothing is going to ever change. We're going to, we're going to keep that commitment. We're going to be steadfast to the one that we uh, hope to spend our future with. <clears throat> and uh, so that's a very important thing when it comes to the marriage relationship. Uh, and uh, if you're not married this morning, why, if you find someone, just be sure you have found the one that you feel like you can live the rest of your life with. And if you're with someone this morning, uh, why, you need to have that kind of commitment uh, that you're going to stay there, you're going to be steadfast. Uh, well, I say nothing will ever change. <clears throat> That's kind of humorous, isn't it? Because uh, a lot of things do change in life. Uh, and uh, not always, but in some cases, there's children that come along, and that changes. That will change your marriage forever. And uh, then, uh, not only that, but sometimes there's sickness that comes along, and uh, and I'm not talking about just the flu, but I mean, you know, something that's really, really amounts to something. Uh, why uh, sometimes that makes some changes uh, in our lives and in our homes, and affects our companion. Uh, there's just so many things. Sometimes it can be loss of jobs or getting a better job somewhere or decisions that have to be made. I've never forgotten a year. This has been many years ago, but my brother-in-law that has passed away now, uh, Cecilia's husband, Stephen, I remember that uh, he had a, at this time, he had a, a, I thought it was a good job. It was a good job. And uh, he, uh, anyway, was offered a, uh, a, a better job. And uh, he, he told, he told uh, the ones that he, for which he was working, it was a, 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 it was a corporation of some kind, and uh, he told them that he, would, he was willing to go, and I think it, went, it was in Canada, uh, he was willing to go if he could find a good church. <laughs> and uh, so... Uh, they arranged for him to uh, be able to fly, and he flew to the well, whatever city it was. I don't remember, but um, anyway, he uh, uh, while he was there, he he looked. Uh, I don't know what he had a couple days or what he had, but anyway, he looked for a good church. He couldn't find one, and so he came back and he told them. Uh, he told the company. He said, "I won't move because I couldn't find a good church." Uh, well, sometimes there's things that come along that when we first decide to get married, we would never think about. <laughs> and there's decisions to be made. And so I just want to tell us this morning that we have to make up our mind, though, that we're going to stay <laughs> with our companion. When it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I'm so glad for the time. I was 19 when I got saved, and uh, I wasn't just real young, but I wasn't old yet. And uh, But anyway, I, uh, once I found the Lord, uh, to the best of my ability, I decided that I was going to stay with the Lord for the rest of my life. Now, I knew that it was possible to fall, I knew it was possible to fail, and uh, I was, uh, I guess I was afraid that I would fail, <clears throat> but so far the Lord has helped me to stay with Him, and I'm, I'm very, very thankful for that. Uh, and so these decisions that have to do with marriage also has to do with, uh, uh, there's a spiritual side to it. Uh, the second thing, uh, and uh, uh, you that are older, you listen to this because you might need it worse than these younger ones, but 
But anyway, there has to be romance too. And uh, anyway, I, uh, you know, uh, even after you're married, there needs to be a, a date night along. And if you've, if you've got out of the habit, you need to put it on the calendar. Uh, by the way, we had a date night last night. And uh, so uh, anyway, we, uh, we do it about every week. And uh, uh, everybody that, you know, I pastor, well, they've, they've learned that. And, and uh, so... Uh, and we were, as far as I know, we're done pastoring now, but, but still it's part of our life. And uh, uh, so anyway, we see that, uh, that it didn't stop after we said our I do's. Uh, and uh, because we're, uh, you know, the, the bride still needs, uh, still needs the coals uh, uh, stoked once in a while, and so does the groom. <laughs> But I'd like to ask you this morning, if you're a Christian this morning, do you, do you make love to the eternal bridegroom of your soul? Do you have times when you get along with him and tell him how much you love him and how much you care for him and how much you want to serve him and how you want to, uh, him to live with you and be with you? And I'm getting now, this was Rogers, not this church here, but up on Spring Street was our first church. And uh, so a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of water, so to speak, has gone under the bridge uh, since that time. Uh, but now we're getting on the older side of life, uh, and we retired uh, last June, uh, the end of June. And uh, so, but anyway, I've told the Lord different times and felt the Lord with it. I want I want to walk with you until, by the grace of God, I walk into heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I do. I want to walk with the Lord until by the grace of God someday I walk into heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to stay in love with the Lord. And then there has to be trust. Well, I would just like to tell you this morning, and I guess I give you a little bit of marriage counseling here, but, uh, you know, a chair, a, a trust isn't something that comes with the wedding ceremony. You know, the wedding ceremony is important. Uh, and it can help, uh, I'm su I suppose, as far as trust is concerned. But trust is something that is earned. Trust is something that is uh, maintained uh, uh, through a lot of diligence and through the uh, uh, duration of, our, uh, of the marriage. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we need to be careful that we don't say things that uh, cause us to, to lose our, our trust. Uh, 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 that our companion might have in us. We need to keep that trust. And there's a lot of, uh, uh, my uh, brother Gary Skank, a lot of you know him, but he's, uh, he was a childhood friend of mine. And he told me uh, in his uh, insurance selling, it's been a long time since he told me this, but he told me one time, he said, you know, I've been in lots of homes. And he said, I found out that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, men and women that do not tell the truth to each other. Now, I, I know a lot of you, you're having trouble believing that, but that's true. And uh, there's a lot that don't tell the truth. But I want to, Nancy sang that song this morning and the chorus went, I can trust Jesus. Uh, and I'm glad that I can. I can trust Jesus. Uh, he never once has failed to meet my need. He's my strong tower, the strength in my weakest hour. I can trust Jesus. He takes care of me. Now, I know I can trust him, but I want to know this morning, can Jesus trust me? And, uh, you know, as we, as we uh, walk with the Lord, and uh, anyway, before we went to Grenada, we uh, took a course, and uh, the Nancy's the one that really did it. I had to take it, but it was uh, about schooling our girls, you know, they're at home. And, but anyway, in that course, I remember uh, one thing that they had was that as you develop uh, in your life, why then uh, usually there are greater spheres that the Lord's able to use you in of usefulness. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, it is true. And so uh, we can trust Jesus, but can he trust us? So we want to do in such a way that Jesus can trust us. Another thing there needs to be if uh, we decide that we want to be married, we need to be faithful. 
we say till death do us part. <clears throat> and so we do not want to betray our spouse's love. We commit ourselves totally to our spouse and we want to seek affection <clears throat> from other others. Uh, there may be situations sometimes that can happen in the workplace or different places where it's not always the easiest, but it's important to be true to your vows. And uh, so I want to ask you this morning, are you, are you true to your vows as far as your spouse is concerned? Uh, are you true to the Lord as far as your vows to the Lord? Are you true to Him in all circumstances and seasons? Are you true to Him? There's times it's easy to be true. There's times it's not so easy to be true. I remember years ago, um, I, for several years, I was chaplain at the Parsons Hospital. And uh, anyway, I uh, felt especially directed that I was what I was where the Lord wanted me to be. I, I, I suppose I was a, a chaplain uh, there for, I don't know whether it was 10, 15 years. It was quite a while. <laughs> but uh, it was for a while at least. And uh, anyway, uh, from being starting as chaplain, why then I was uh, I was put on the board, uh, the chaplain board, and uh, and after that, by the time came, I was I was uh, uh, I was the under head chaplain. I wasn't the head chaplain, but I was uh, next to him. And uh, but anyway, I. Uh, I remember one time we were having a board meeting. I always had a banquet once a year, and a uh, uh, banquet with a chaplain's banquet. And of course, there was people of all different churches and all different faiths, and that were there. And and uh, the year before, I hadn't been a part of deciding what the uh, entertainment would be. And uh, but the year before, they'd had they'd had uh, the. Uh, from the Parsons High School, they had a dance a dance group come in and do the, the entertainment. <clears throat> well, anyway, that day uh, it was. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's times I haven't I have failed, but this was one time the Lord helped me not to fail. And uh, anyway, I remember Susan Cotton was there. She was the head of the nursing department. Dr. Miller was there. He was a Catholic doctor. And uh, there, was, uh, uh, there were others that were there. I remember there was one man that was there. I didn't know who he was. And, and uh, there was different ones of uh, officious, I guess, people to some extent. And uh, anyway, it came up, and I don't remember who said it, but somebody said, well, why don't we have the same entertainment that we had last year? I didn't know what to say right off, but in a little bit I told them, I said, well, I said, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm probably more conservative, the most conservative uh, member uh, here, that's here today. But uh, I said, you know, we kind of have a problem with doing something like that. And uh, anyway, everything got real quiet, and it had worked out that day that uh, John, John Shy was ahead, and he'd asked me to take the notes for the meeting. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, it wasn't too long till he dismissed the meeting. Well, I stayed there, and Susan Cotton stayed there, and Dr. Miller stayed there, and they were just as friendly as they could be. And uh, I took the minutes into John, and he told, he told me, he said, Dwayne, he said, you won't have to worry about dancing anymore. He said, we won't have dancing anymore. And when we went, the entertainment, they had a gal at the harp that played a harp, probably played, well, I think they had religious, a religious quartet that time. And uh, anyway, uh, it's not always easy to be faithful, and sometimes it takes some wisdom. Uh, and the Lord gave me that. It wasn't, didn't come uh, from me especially, but the Lord helped me to have it. Another thing that we have to have in our marriage relationship is appreciation. You, you withhold appreciation too long, and you're going to kill the romance. <clears throat> You know, we, we just tend to gravitate toward people that make us feel good about ourselves or we feel comfortable of uh, being around them. And, you know, it's a lot easier sometimes to see people's shortcomings, and now I'm talking about marriage spouses, it's a lot easier sometimes to see shortcomings than it is to see strengths. Amen. 
<laughs> now, I'm sure that I'm probably, I and Nancy are the only ones that have any shortcomings here. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, it's a lot easier sometimes to see those things than to see the strengths. Well, sometimes we have to, we have to work uh, on seeing the strengths uh, in our spouse, don't we? I guess this morning, though, I want to ask a question. This is kind of a pointed question. But are you disappointed in God? You say, well, no, I'm not disappointed in God. Well, I'm going to tell you, sometimes there can be some terrific hard things come. And I have a daughter, and her name is Sonia. And when Lathan got hurt so bad, so bad, she let Nancy know that she was having trouble. She was having trouble with her relationship with God. And, you know, when she went out of the house that day, she had no idea, but it was seven weeks before she ever went back in her own house. You just don't know some of the hard things that can come. And I'm not saying that not trying to excuse her, but I am telling you that sometimes things can happen that's going to try our faith in God. Teamwork. We need to pull in the same direction. We don't want to pull against each other. We want to have similar goals. We want to have plans and how to get there. You're not just living together if you're married or want to be married and you do find someone someday. You're a team, so you need to have a plan. You need to have a plan how to get there. You need to have some goals. Do you know what kind of goals that God has in mind for you this morning? He may have some goals in mind that beyond what you ever thought. He might, he might, he might have some goals, some things that he wants you to do beyond what you ever comprehended could be. I told you about the a chaplain thing. I'm telling you, I never thought about being anything like that in my life. To, <laughs> but when it happened, <clears throat> I knew God was in it. I remember that night after the uh, first Sunday I spent in the hospital. I remember coming in the, a Sunday night. We was pastoring at Aldemont. I tell you, I'm not much of a I'm not real demonstrative. I can sometimes, but I remember that night I came in church. I felt like I could have come in. I didn't, but I felt like I could come in shouting in the door. Sometimes God knows what he wants for us. God has some goals for us. We need to know what those are. The last thing I have is work. It takes a lot of work to make a successful marriage. It begins the day that you say, or I said, I do. But we need to be consistent with our spouse on a daily basis. Uh, you know how people know what our character is? It's by our actions. And so we need to grow uh, in love and in knowledge of each other. Believe it or not, I, I know Nancy pretty well, and she knows me pretty well, but there are some times that we don't completely know what the other one's thinking, believe it or not. And, and uh, but I want to tell you this more. Are you growing in your relationship with God? Well, we're going to move on now this morning. And as we look at this psalm, if you have your Bibles open now to this psalm, <clears throat> we see that, as I said, we looked, he was the king, he was a victorious warrior, he was the ideal bridegroom, and now we're going to look at verse 9, the lovely bride. We see that prophetically this was spoken of the time when there was going to be the marriage of the Lamb, and the king has a glorious bride, and his bride is at his right hand, and she's clad in the gold of Ophir. That was the most finest and purest gold of the ancient world. She was a pure, she was a lovely bride. Uh, among her attendants were the daughters of kings. What a privilege it is to be Christ's bride. Uh, 
Christ laid down, uh, loves us so much, and I, we talked about the victorious warrior, but he laid down his life for us. <clears throat> And we're going one day, we're going to bask, uh, we're going to bask in the presence of Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, we're drawn to him, we're drawn to him by the fragrance of the tomb. We see that because he loves righteousness and hates wickedness, why he produces his righteousness in us uh, through the cleansing word or our justification, and I think that's part of meeting him. The times of chastening, things that you feel that you've done and things somehow aren't quite right between you and him. And then there comes that time when we're completely submissive to his will, and that's our sanctification. When we give everything over to the Lord, when we ask the Lord, not my will, but thine be done, uh, when his will is everything to us, and whatever there is in us that shrinks back from that, we ask the Lord uh, to destroy that and to sanctify us to the will of God. <clears throat> the Revelation to uh, tells us that we're going to be presented in sparkling white, no spots or wrinkles or blemishes. We're going to have holy hearts. Uh, we're going to reign with him. <coughs> We're going to share in his inheritance uh, and what he has. Uh, I could call names this morning, but I won't. But some of you that have been married quite a while, you're you're enjoying. You're enjoying. I guess you might say your earthly inheritance. Uh, you're enjoying a life that you've built for yourselves. Uh, but a few years and this this life is going to all fade away and pass away. But I tell you, that life there is not going to be for 50 years or 60 years or 70 years. Uh, it's going to be world without end. Uh, praise God. Uh, world without end. Can you comprehend it? Uh, we move, uh, we see, as we look at this, we see that life sometimes has its trials though, and struggles, and sometimes these things, they seem like they will never end. Uh, but we have to focus on the joy that is set before us. Uh, and so there's times in the midst of our life here on earth uh, that we struggle with different trials and sufferings. But Paul said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For our light affliction is what is but for a moment. Uh, and so we don't want to look at these things. We don't want to look at the things that are not seen. Uh, as we continue to look at this lovely bride, we see the counsel to the bride in the 10th verse was to leave everything and devote herself totally to the bridegroom. Uh, in other words, hearken. Don't just listen, but obey. Uh, and so we see that eternally it's an important decision to follow that eternal bridegroom. In the Garden of Eden, we see that God said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And Jesus said, So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Uh, if you have your Bibles open and you're looking there at that tenth verse, it says, Hearken, O daughter, and consider, and incline thine ear, forget also thine own people and thy father's house. Uh, and so we see that when we come to the Lord, and the Lord comes into our heart and he forgives our sins, uh, we have new purposes. Uh, we have new priorities. Uh, we forsake uh, things uh, that are selfish ambitions. We uh, forsake things that uh, are uh, 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 desires that conflict with the Lord when he comes into our heart. We forsake worldly pleasures that we don't feel like are consistent with living a Christian life. Uh, we're willing to give our possessions, whatever he wants of it. We're willing to give, uh, to give them to him, uh, to really know him. He has to have first place. And so uh, the, the, the admonition was there, uh, forget, uh, uh, forget also thine own people and thy, thy father's house. <coughs> so we see that Christ wants you. He wants me. 
He wants us, he has a, 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 a desire as a husband w- would for his wife. Uh, Christ wants intimacy w- uh, with us as a husband with his wife. Uh, Christ isn't willing to share. He's our Lord. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the uh, uh, wives be to their own husbands in everything. And so as we look at that 10th verse, we see that we have to, we have to allow the Lord to have his way. We're living in a world today that doesn't recognize that, but really the Bible teaches that the identity really of the wife is to become, uh, I I guess I would say, in in harmony, maybe it would be a good word, in harmony with that of her husband's pursuits. Uh, And then as we look in verse 11, we see it uses the word worship here. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is the Lord. Worship thou him. Uh, And so we see that worship here, uh, the uh, psalmist is writing of Christ as worshiping anything. If we worship anything or anybody other than uh, uh, Christ, we see that it's not right. Uh, And so we need to worship the Lord. And then if you look at verses 12 through 15, we see the bride's reward. Uh, The daughter of Tyre is going to be there with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. She's going to be exalted among the nations. She's going to reign with Christ during the millennial reign. She's going to reign with Christ through eternity. Verse 13, if you look at that, she's going to be dressed in perfect and in glorious clothing. You look at the first part of verse 14, she's going to be presented at the wedding uh, to the king in fine garments. The last part uh, uh, of the verse 14, she's going to be accompanied by pure attendance, uh, which probably includes Old Testament believers uh, and probably includes the holy angels. Uh, and in verse 15, we see that it's going to be a glad, it's going to be a, a, a tremendous time of gladness and rejoicing uh, when we enter into the king's palace. Uh, praise God. I say hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. And then we get to the, uh, the we see that the, not only the bride is rewarded, as we've talked about here, uh, but we see in verses 12 through 15, it was the bride's reward. But now in 16 and 17, the king is rewarded. Uh, and they say that that is the uh, use here of the masculine gender in the Hebrew. Uh, and so we see that the bridegroom submitted to his father's will. Uh, And so the king is going to father many royal sons and daughters that are going to be princes and and princesses. And so we are to be witnesses here and now so the people be drawn to the Lord and they can be among his princes and princesses. Hallelujah. God is still drawing people into the kingdom of God in 2022. Hallelujah. And so we, as we look at this, we see that uh, there's more spiritual children going to be born into God's family. They're going to be, uh, they're going to reign with Christ, and the King is going to be honored, and He's going to be praised. There's coming that time. The book tells us, I, the Bible tells us, I think it's in Philippians, that every knee, every tongue is going to confess that He is the Lord, and every knee is going to bow to Him. It doesn't matter who they are, every knee and every tongue is going to confess. It doesn't matter whether it's of our nation or other nations. The, uh, in verse 17, the word people in the Hebrew text is in the plural. And so as we look at that, we see that he said, I'll make thy name be remembered in all generations. Therefore the people shall praise thee forever and ever. 
Oh man, if you go to Revelation, the first chapter, and also the fifth chapter, you'll see that his name is going to be praised not only by people of the English-speaking tongue, but they're going to be praised by every nation. It doesn't matter who the nation is, they're going to be praised in every nation and every tribe, and every tongue, whatever language you speak, it is going to be the, the uh, it is going to be there. Uh, praise God! We're going to praise God. I don't. I'm not saying it'll be in all the different languages. Maybe there'll be a heavenly language, but all peoples are going to be there from all the four corners of the world. Uh, the peoples are going to be there. Uh, praise His name. Uh, I wrote down a song last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, or yesterday morning, maybe it was really. <clears throat> there is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. There'll be no sorrow there. <clears throat> There'll be no more burdens to bear. No more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever we will be with the one who died. I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be, the chorus says. Uh, that, uh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, what a day, glorious day. <laughs> That's going to be, praise God. I want to be part of the bride. <clears throat> praise his name. I'll turn it back to you, Brother Brandon. I'm finished. <clears throat>